It's pretty quiet today because it's a Friday, I guess, but usually this, this is called Library Walk and there used to be tons of people on this and so I wear headphones and there's no music in it, but just so people won't talk to me. <laughs> I have a bad problem with not saying no to people, so when they give me things, I have to actually take the stuff and I don't want it. I used to volunteer at um, Red Cross and help them sign up people to donate blood. Donate blood, save three lives. I used to have biochem lab in there. I used to live in that building. So much has been remodeled since I've been here. Crazy. So a tip I want to give pre-medical students is the importance of networking. Um, so like doing things that are out of your comfort zone, going to events when you want to say no. And why I say this is because of that saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's everyone can study hard and get good grades. <laughs> Anyone can get from point A to point B, but if you have someone helping you along the way, it's a lot easier to say get to point A from point A to point B. So an example I want to give is when I rushed for Phi Delta Epsilon and it's the pre-medical fraternity here on campus. I'm just going to take you down memory lane here and behind me is um, actually the food court where I met all the active members and we did this little speed meeting thing. This was really intimidating for me just for the fact that I went into it not knowing anyone and none of my friends were doing it but at the end of it I made the best my best friends and not only that I landed a lab position um, and from that lab position I found someone to shadow and if I didn't have that yes I could have found things but things came easier because I was able to network so my suggestion is just try saying yes. Do things that you wouldn't normally do and you might surprise yourself and you might be happy with where you actually end up. So for those of you who don't know who to shadow, a good way to start is asking your school counselor. Um, there are a lot of pre-medical associations and there might be already physicians associated with the school who are willing to take pre-medical students. And if you don't have that, there's big teaching hospitals like UCSD tend to take students. Um, you can go to hospitals directly and ask them. And if all fails, you can always ask Dr. Google. Um, find physicians in your area, call offices directly, and see if they're taking any medical students. skateboard.
so I'm sitting in front of BML right now and I didn't want to talk in there because it was so quiet and I remember studying for the MCAT here every day during I forgot when it was but I would study here every day and I wanted to give you guys some tips about how to study specifically for standardized tests like the MCAT. So studies have shown that the more questions that you take, practice questions that you take, the better your scores are. So the, there was a correlation. So the people who took more practice questions actually did better on the actual exam than people who didn't. Every morning, I would actually come to this biomedical library, sit on their computers and take uh, eight hour practice test and after the test I would go through all the answers and write down things that I got wrong things I need to needed to restudy because this is the easiest way to increase your score I, I think I took around 30 practice tests and then I would go to another area I would use Princeton or Kaplan books I didn't have money enough money at the time to take the actual course but some of my friends gave me all the Princeton books so I read through that as my study material and when I study I love it to be completely quiet so this was a good place for me to study specifically for the MCAT So as you guys can see, this place is a lot more active than the other library. I usually come to this library in between my classes or after class or this is place just to general study during school. And the best way I've learned to study was going over all the lecture material before lecture started, writing active notes or active listening during lecture, and then right after, I would like to rewrite all my notes just to cement them in my brain. I know a lot of people are auditory learners, but I find that um, pen to paper helped me memorize things a lot better. And then when it came close to test dates, I would go over all my lecture notes. Um, when I found that I was very comfortable with the material, I would like to study in groups, um, just ask questions with my friends. to do ballet in this room. This one was for modern dance. Oh, I also taught hip hop in that one. And this one over here, actually. <laughs> Obviously the perfect alignment for ballet. We are in the ballet studio. I haven't been here in forever. So for those who don't know, I also minored in dance and that brings me to my next tip, which is just doing things that you love, discovering yourself and discovering new things because that's what the interview process is about. They'll ask about who you are as a person and not just about medicine and they want to know that you've lived life and you, you've went through all these avenues to discover that medicine is the right avenue for you. And you can't do that without, you know, exploring life. Um, I think the one thing I regret in undergrad is not traveling more um, because I felt like it was such a carefree time to travel. I didn't have that much stress and that much burden besides financial burdens. So I want people to remember that Yes, medicine is amazing, but once you get into medical school, it's medicine, it will be the rest of your life. Um, in undergrad, discover yourself, be free and explore new things, do new experiences. Like it's such a fun time in your life. And so just don't forget to enjoy it.
applied to med school and got through the process and you got an interview, congratulations. A lot of you were asking questions about um, what did you do during interviews and I wanted to give you some tips that I didn't already talk about in previous videos. So a good tip is to do your research on the school, learn about the school curriculum, what they offer, um, how many hours they have lab, things of that sort, anything that's specific to that school. A good way to go about this is asking current students who, or asking maybe faculty member about the school curriculum, things of that sort. It shows that you're very um, interested and shows that you're invested in the school. Also they just want to see that you're genuine. I think the biggest thing is getting over your fear um, or your anxiousness or your anxiety and that can be hard. A good way to do that is just to have mock interviews maybe with a professor or someone that you respect so you take the mock interview seriously. And to close this out, I would like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video. Audible offers hundreds of audiobooks that you can actually listen to on the go. For those of you who know me, know that English is actually my second language. I was in ESL classes most of grade school. And I think that language is such an important aspect of interviews, your career, your everyday life. But most importantly, it's how people judge you. It's an outward projection of your education. And one way I developed my English was reading and listening to audiobooks. One book that I'm currently listening to is called The Emperor of All Maladies, The Biography of Cancer. It's really interesting because it talks about um, the beginnings of anatomy and dissection of the human body. Um, it also talks about the beginnings of surgery, radiology, and it even touches base on the politics behind medicine. That's how, all I got to so far. If you're interested in signing up for a free 30-day trial, you can visit audibletrial.com slash I'll also leave a link in the description box down below. If you don't like the audiobook that you're currently listening to, you can always exchange it for another one. And any audiobook that you choose within this 30-day trial is for you to keep even if you don't continue with the subscription. And that's all I have for today. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or if you learned anything. And um, subscribe if you haven't already. Join the fam and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.